Okay, so I guess this is part three of the uh, low voltage installation in the bar slash restaurant. So I guess we'll start over here as this is going to be our main control area for pretty much the whole place. Um, now what I've done here, let me just actually back up and come over here is I've ran two inch conduit from the back side here up the wall uh, the turns aren't very optimal um, sort of kinks up in a few places it's still fairly easy to use my fish to get the to get wire down through there so I haven't had much trouble but I realize the bends aren't, aren't that great um, but this was really the only way to, to make this happen so I've got two inch conduit running there uh, it runs long here and then it goes up to a box up above the projector screen. I can zoom in on that. Maybe. Yeah, kind of. So back to the central control area here. Um, now the two inch conduit comes down to this box. This box feeds this box, this box feeds this box, and then this box feeds that box. This box, this three gang box here is for the, oops, is for the Yamaha DCP controller. I may do an additional one up above that. I'm not yet certain. But anyways, that's what this box is for. This is the controller for the audio levels in the Yamaha system. These other boxes, you know, these will have housed the uh, RCA ballon. Um, this is you know, the up down switch for the projector screen, HDMI cables to hook up Apple TV or um, any video source to the projector screen. And this is actually the wiring that I've been doing for the Wine Guardian because uh, it's got several temperature sensors in the ducting, this duct, and also also up here. Let's see if you can catch that wiring right there. So it'll be, mul it'll be a multiple sensor uh, system for measuring temperature and, and humidity and whatnot. Anyways, and that's about that. So that's again, this is uh, it just seems like all overkill, and you know, it's I just like making things very sturdy. And you can see, you know, you can plug things in and out of these boxes and they just don't move the rock solids. One thing about these plastic boxes, you know, if you don't secure them very well when you're unplugging, yeah, not that you'd be unplugging CAT6 cabling a lot. Typically you plug it in and you, you keep it plugged in. But, you know, it's nice to have these things very sturdy. So I use extra screws and extra blocking here uh, to support the boxes so they don't move around a lot. And kind of take you a tour behind the bar. So for the low voltage, now what we've done here is, again this is all overkill, two one inch conduits running up the length of the wall, Let's see if I can zoom in on that, to a box up top above the crawl space. So again, if I want to add wires down the length of this wall, you know, uh, I would not be able to do that after the fact, after it's she rocked, but now that this is in place, any point in time, if I want to add something or remove something, it's very easily, to, I can do that very easily. This pipe actually runs down to the ground. It's a PVC pipe and it runs under the concrete and stubs up right here at the bar. One is for electrical and the other one is for a low voltage, any low voltage devices that will be at the bar. Because essentially the bar is an island so to speak, so this is the only way that you can run wiring to the bar was through the ground, through conduit. And again, that comes up. It comes up right there and runs on the ground. Okay. And then we have another one that's kind of covered up by this uh, sheet of plywood here, but there's another sort of two one inch Conduits running up the length, 
up to a box in the crawl space. And finally, a third one. Same thing, they're all pretty much the same. Or in the length up there. And if you come over here, this is be like the lounge area of the bar. And I have a, another box here I'm not having really finished doing yet. So just to show you, like we don't put some extra supports in them, they how they kind of wiggle around like that, which is annoying. So I'll put a two by four there, secure that. Um, and I actually broke this conduit by accident, so I'll put a coupler on it and uh, connect the two with a coupler. And there's a box up there, so I can just run that down the wall and add you know, whatnot, whatever I want later on uh, without having trying to fish it down a wall full of insulation and pipes and all that kind of stuff. This low voltage conduit uh, I got from the, the low, a low voltage supply house that's close to where I live. Uh, Home Depot does not carry this conduit. They call they carry the blue stuff, which they call Smurf Tube, um, which is you know the company that uh, the company that makes this is called Carlon. Uh, I find that this orange stuff is actually better than the Smurf Tube. It's actually more durable and bends easier. Uh, but it's made by the same company, Carlon. Um, and then we have my new construction rings for the VXC8s that are going to be going here. I've got conduit feeding that. Again, overkill for just one wire, but in case I want to add more speakers later, for, or for any reason, you know, I decide, hey, maybe I want to put a camera here instead in the corners or something, I've got a, <coughs> I've got a means of getting there without, you know, ripping out a drywall or pull my, you know, pull my hair out. Not that I have any hair, but... <laughs> Trying to get wires through through the joists here, and then that condo runs up there to another box right there on the crawl space there. And let's see what else we got here. Uh, this is you know still a work in progress. You see, I'm working on the HDMI wires there for drop down uh, projector. Uh, that is actually a mono price. They're, they're uh, I don't know what you call it, scissor type um, uh, lift. I guess it's called a lift, a projector lift. We got from Mono Price, and that is the BenQ MH760 projector. Yeah, MH760. 5,000 lumens. They're difficult to find. Uh, I've it, with those with those high lumens and high definition. That's about a thousand bucks, so it's not cheap, but I installed that in another restaurant and it's a pretty good projector. Uh, and you definitely need a bright projector screen in a place like this uh, to be able to see it because it's not in your house, you know, where you can close the, close, the, uh, close the blinds and make it dark. It's in a restaurant, so you can't do that typically. So it's a good projector. Uh, I might cover that later, uh, more in depth how I installed that all the wiring associated with that. This is a, a, a delight or daylight, sorry, a daylight projector screen, uh, recess flush mount. Again, I might uh, review those uh, things in detail later. Just wanted to cover everything that's going on here. And also two behind these boxes, there's another uh, box, low voltage box running up to the conduit up top and I guess that about covers it for now um, so here's the uh, low voltage side of the uh, new construction rings for the VXC speakers and installed uh, I haven't installed all of them yet I'm sort of we're waiting on the lighting to be positioned so I don't get in the way of the lighting so it just happens that here we knew exactly where the lights were going to go. Here we kind of know, but I felt that they should be installed first so that I don't have to move my rings later. So I've got three of them up already. Uh, there's So if there's two there, there's going to be actually four here because this ceiling height 
is different than this sort of, you know, quote unquote, soffit. Um, so there would be actually four on this ceiling height. So one, two, one, two, three, four, and then four on the soffit, three or four on the soffit. Uh, there should be about eight in total uh, speakers, PXC speakers. All right, so that's it for now, and uh, stay tuned for more progress. Thanks for watching.